So I grew up in southwest London. I think growing up there wasn't loads of opportunities. But I was quite passionate about architecture and design as a young person. So despite not necessarily seeing any architects or designers, I was quite adamant on pursuing something like that. I know people, some people say they have their calling, I think. That was just kind of my calling, because before I can even remember, I was playing with Lego, or I was like trying to make things, or I was trying to craft my spaces. Sean has always been an active child. He's never been one to sit still. He loved to learn. He liked to make sure that doing certain things will encourage others. That's just how he was. Sean is someone that you can rely on, you know. He's very helpful, he's caring, and he wants the best for everyone. He wants everybody to be just like him. You know, he's not someone that, if he learns something, he's gonna keep it for himself. He's gonna share it. So I didn't know what to expect going into university. I just assumed if I wanted to become an architect, I'd need to just study at uni seven years, like, straight. Obviously, that's not the case, but because I didn't really have any access to people like day to day that I can ask them loads of university questions. For example, in architecture, there's courses that are ARB and RIBA accredited. When I was applying for university, I didn't know anything about this. The first year, people used to like laugh at my work because obviously I didn't, I wasn't putting in as much work as everyone else because I just didn't know how much work you needed to put in. I, th I think that was the moment where I realised that if I'm serious about this I, I need to kind of pull, pull my socks up. So I went from getting all thirds to pretty much all firsts. So after I graduated I did a Erasmus programme so I actually worked in two practices in Mallorca in, in Spain. When I was there I felt quite comfortable with most of the things that I had to do in, in the actual practice. And then after I came back and I worked in the practical G-pad in, in London, I think that's where I gained a lot of the skills that I still use today. So I think that working in that practice was quite eye-opening. I realised that whilst I did have experience and I did do work at university, that doesn't always translate to being good in practice. After I came back from Mallorca and I was working at GPED in, in London, I actually went on a program with the Stephen Lawrence Charitable Trust. So my parents had always told me, my parents and my family members had always told me about the story, the story of Stephen Lawrence because they knew I wanted to become an architect and obviously it was a, a massive story because of the brutal murder. Teenagers accused of murdering a black school boy. There were loads of different activities available. There was loads of activities led by people that weren't that much older than me, but then some people that were much senior. But it was, this, it was a similar concept where you would go and there'll be things that you could sign up to. And on, those, on, on that program there was public speaking sessions, CV writing sessions, how to conduct yourself in an interview session. There was one session that I remember where literally you, you had to speak using your hands and you couldn't, you couldn't actually like use your voice. And it was quite powerful because all of these things kind of contributed to me being more confident. So PAW is an acronym for Power Out of Restriction. It was really down to the support and help of, of Neil Onions who, who helped us kind of push for, for the organisation to be created. Essentially the work that we do at Port is to empower young people and upskill them so that they can create something in their local community. The mural that we did in Mitcham, so the Mitcham colourway, so we got them to paint over the existing walls and then paint essentially their design that they came up with. For us, we've all had mentors, and whether that's our parents or people in the industry or tutors. But it, for the most part, it took a long while to seek out mentors in the actual industry. Chloe was the first Build The Way intern. So this was an internship that Paul worked on it in collaboration with GPED. And the whole premise of the internship was to give one young person the opportunity to work 12 months in architecture practice. So I met Sean through the Buildway internship programme. I believe that I'm more of a practical learner, so when I'm in a space where I actually get to do something and it amounts to something, I put in more effort and I'm motivated to do more. Any time that I needed to talk about something, like, could be architecture related or anything to, like, help me better myself in my journey. 
I'll just contact Sean. A lot of things that I didn't know about the architectural industry, like he'll let me know and like he was very like passionate and motivated to make sure that I understand what I'm getting myself into and if I'm going to take this route, these are like the best steps I should take. Through all the work that I do, whether it's writing, work with young people to design murals and installations or architecture, is about showing young people from similar backgrounds that yes, you've got the potential to become an architect, to become a designer and do everything that I'm doing and more. The people that I kind of try and surround myself with, we're not going to lay down and just feel sorry for ourselves. We're going to take action. We're going to try and make moves. We're going to see who are our allies and who can we work with and, and infuse them with energy. And we're going to make a difference because I think if we're just here waiting for a difference to happen and we just want things to come, like they're never going to come. You need to like we got to get this train going and I think that's something that I'm super passionate about. So for any young people that want to study architecture, go for it. Like believe in yourself, believe in your dreams, be passionate. Don't let that hunger and passion die because I think a lot of people along the way, especially when you come from a community where there's no architects or no one knows architects or no one knows anything about buildings or architecture, a lot of people will be like, oh, you're still trying to do that, or they'll be giving you a little bit of light shade, like, oh, maybe forget that, do something else. And no, if you're passionate about something, take that passion and use it and continue because people will see that passion and they'll believe in you.